I'm here with Andrew Vaz from Juniper Networks, and uh, we are talking about uh, the, the state and future of 5G. Um, you have said that uh, for uh, service providers networking, this is one of the most exciting times, especially for network architects. So yes. w why, do you, why do you feel that way? You know, Sterling, we're in this kind of confluence of so many different things actually happening at once. Um, we have technology that actually is fairly interesting in solving problems, and we actually have business problems uh, from the industry that are aching to be solved. So I've been in the industry for quite some time where we've had technology that was looking for a problem or problems that actually had no way of being solved. We finally have come to a point where we see enterprises, uh, businesses, public sectors asking, asking service providers to solve specific problems for them. Um, and we finally have some of the technology to do it uh, between AI, ML, next-gen routing systems and infrastructure, uh, distributed cloud and automation. Um, we actually have the tool set to go and actually solve these problems. Interesting. So, you know, as we do our research around 5G, there's a lot of technologies out there. Always talk about a toolbox. It's a very large toolbox, to yes. be honest. Yes. But what uh, you're engaged with a lot of customers right now. Right. What, uh, from your engagements, what are the, the main technologies that are, are bubbling to the top? What are the service providers asking Juniper to do? Uh, that, that's, that's a great question. So um, what I'm seeing is there's a new set of applications that they have to solve for. Before it was okay just to offer connectivity for all intents and purposes. Uh, you know, it might be residential mobile connectivity or maybe a business VPN connectivity even, for example. Now the problem set's getting more complex. Um, for example, somebody might want a particular network slice with a set of SLAs attached to it. Latency, bandwidth, availability, security, this whole host of um, new things to think about. So if, if we think about the traditional uh, set of um, 5G next-gen services, right? We start with the MBB, which is essentially more bandwidth. So that in, of cell, in itself has a new set of technology all the way from you know, 10, 25, 100, 400 gig. So there's a strategy required there and set of technologies. Um, if we go look at the more interesting use cases around MMTC for like IoT, next gen um, uh, industrialization, or if I look at uh, URLLC where we have very latency sensitive ap applications, um, there's a whole new set of um, technologies we need to look at. So for example, network slicing becomes very interesting. So we see a lot of people asking about segment routing. Uh, how do I take my MPLS network, add segment routing on top of it to basically offer a programmable network infrastructure? So if a customer asks for something that can react rapidly and quickly and agilely to go implement those services. Um, those are two key ones. EVPN is another protocol uh, which becomes very interesting since it leverages all the good things from BGP uh, for layer two services. So um, active active type of availability, realizing and using BGP for faster convergence times, et cetera. We're able to actually put together multiple technologies for this. Um, and then if I add on top of that cloud-based security for connected security and to build out a threat aware infrastructure, uh, as well as like machine learning and AI algorithms to go and automate the network more effectively, there's just like a whole host of interesting technologies that make it very exciting to be in this space right there's now. There's a lot, there's a lot, lot there. A ton. Yeah. So, you know, the, the, we look at, there's a lot of announcements uh, from service providers announcing initial 5G globally. A lot of that really does seem focused on the enhanced broadband, faster speeds. Um, the impacts to the transport network, though, initially, we haven't seen, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, we haven't seen tremendous amount of, you know, major impact versus, a, you know, an LTE advanced type of deployment. Right. Um, you know, w w do transport do the transport networks really need to be upgraded and you know do they need does that really need to happen now or right. is this infrastructure in place going to kind of you know, carry them through yeah so the uh, wonderful question and the way i look at this is if you are looking to build a 5g ready network not just for embb but for the next set of services you have to start now uh, the breadth of things you need to think about like we said security automation timing latency bandwidth, slicing your network, all of those require, uh, frankly, to be very well thought out. Um, we're actually seeing service providers come back to us 
with specific use cases they're getting from enterprises. So there's a very interesting dynamic happening in the enterprise itself. The spending shift has happened in enterprises where we see budget formally allocated to IT, a good portion of that has actually been allocated back to the enterprise line of business heads. So these guys are told, go make the money and tell us what we need to do to go drive the business. So they're looking to partner with service provi providers, cloud service providers, mobile uh, network operators to go build out their next gen set of services for the enterprise. So because of these new sets of applications, what I'm seeing is service providers are trying to figure out how do I architect this network? What, what should my transport look like? What should my cloud distribution look like? My core SP data center is not going to be able to handle the latency requirements um, as I look at some of these newer sets of applications. So how do I distribute that further out to my edge? Or how do I even distribute that on-prem to an enterprise, for example? So you see the advanced use cases that are really the promise of Fiji. You really do see that primarily driven from the enterprise side. I do, 100%. Yeah. Um, you know, it's the money is there, first of all, and I right. think the money talks. Um, so with that shift, you're seeing the service providers starting to respond as well to say, how do I go and enable this? And it's not just um, traditional enterprises, it's also public sector. We're seeing a lot of smart city projects. We're seeing um, a lot of uh, first responder type networks being asked to be built out where they have high security, high availability, uh, private slices within SP networks that um, various towns and regions want to use. Yeah, interesting. You've mentioned security, I think, at least three times. Yes. So I have to ask you about security. Something, um, you know, as I've looked at transport so far, I actually haven't delved too much in the security. What, what are the, the implications for security, um, you know, to, yes. the, to the transport? What are you hearing? Um, so I, I personally feel as an industry of not focused enough on security from an operator perspective. Uh, the more I look at it, if, if we multiply out just some basic numbers. Um, I think the number I saw was like 75 billion connected devices by 2021, I think was the number. Um, each one of those devices is actually a threat surface. Um, it's actually something that can be used to attack the network. Um, I had a conversation with a, a CTO in, in Europe who basically said the number of attacks on their mobile data center has gone up 400%. This was just crazy. So um, I think there's several different things we need to look at in terms of security uh, in the market right now. Um, then both the volume and the types of attacks have increased and varied dramatically. So it's not just about traditional firewalls or traditional security methodologies. We actually have to be able to utilize some of those other technologies we talked about like ML and AI mm -hmm. to basically start using the compute capabilities, our, clouds, our cloud view of the world identify bad actors, identify malicious IP addresses, being able to push those, um, those, those devices, those numbers, back down into the infrastructure to protect it uh, dynamically, because they're constantly changing, as you know. Mm -hmm. So um, I think uh, we're going to see a big play in building out threat-aware connected infrastructures. Uh, as we go forward over the next three to five years. All right, well, you, you've convinced me. It is an exciting time to be a networking and Excellent. to be a network architect. So, um, yeah, great talking with you, Andrew. Thanks, Sterling. Yeah, yeah look, look forward to catching up with you later. Same. Thanks. Bye.